And welcome to the program. You're watching Our Town, and here we are in Gahnawage Mohawk Television Network Studios. Um, so it's the new year. It's the first show of the new year. We feel like we've been off on holiday for almost a month. It seems like it. So let me be weeks. the first one to say, Happy, Happy New, new Year! year. <laughs> Um, you know, at the beginning of the new year, or even before the new year comes in, people tend to make New Year's resolutions. Right. Um, I try not to, but did you this year? I never, never make New Year's resolutions. And I'll tell you why. It's it's the idea that, you know what, if I really want to make a commitment, I can do it in July, mm -hmm. do it in September, I can do it on a Tuesday, I can do it on a Sunday. <laughs> you can't worry about making all these commitments mm -hmm. just because it's December 31st going to January 1st. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people want to get into shape now. A lot of people want to quit smoking. smoking. I mean, a lot of the yeah, small things, yeah. right? I made a then small. Just do it. I made a small New Year's resolution. I'm actually stuck to it, but okay. I I didn't make it for the New Year. I made it like in December. So it was what like it, so what is it? It's just to um, get in better shape. Really? Yeah. You're in good shape as it is. Yeah, I mean, actually, you walk and you, know, you run. I you run. Know. I'm into running and working out and stuff like that. But I really wanted to just kind of push myself this year and get into some CrossFit and some bodybuilding. So right. that's my, more of a, a goal this year, not so much a resolution. So right. yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. I'm okay with that. You and to be nicer. No. <laughs> and to be, yeah, that would be nice for all of us. Ooh, touche. Yeah. No, anyway. listen, I think I think a good thing, though, uh, for for everybody, Regan, though, is uh, if, and this goes for the whole community. Resolutions. OK, great. But I think the big thing is, is just try to be the best person you possibly can be all year round. That's half the battle right there, because if you're mm -hmm. nice to yourself, then you'll take the interest in saying, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going I mean, to exercise. Yeah. I'm going to do all these things. Yeah. So and try not to, you know, set so high expectations that are just, you know, insurmountable because they're just unrealistic. You know, that's another big downfall of setting a resolution. Mm -hmm. But anyways, lots of things happening in Gahnawage. It's a little bit of a slow period, mind you, in terms mm -hmm. of real hard hitting news. Um, you know, there's a lot of stories developing nationally. But here locally, as we're heading into a brand new year, there's not much happening. There's a few things, you know, with the recycling going on. Sure, that's back. a big issue. Um, you know, there's uh, the community decision-making process will be holding their justice, the first hearing of the, the new forthcoming Justice Act, um, which, you know, Moa Council is urging people to get involved in and participate, membership, um, hearings held this week, things like that. So, you know, if you want to hear... Uh, what's happening here in Gahnawage and you want to stay up to date daily, please visit www.gahnawage411.com. It's the website to go to for all your updates on news, press releases, human interest stories. Plus, you can also catch most of Mohawk TV's programming will be broadcasted through that website via YouTube. Right. Um, but a big story that came down this week mm. is a local woman if you will, was nominated for a Canadian Screen Actors Award. That's right. Um, and she is also a close to your heart in a lot of respects. Well, in so, a lot of ways, yeah, for yes. sure. Gawana uh, Hare, Devry Jacobs, as yeah. most people uh, know her in the community. I know her as uh, this kid who <laughs> uh, would jump up and down, was a really bright uh, little girl. We're very, very, very proud of her. And when from, I say dear to your heart, it's because you, you've been friends with Clinton Lane for... Oh, know, forever. I've known Clinton. Clinton and I, we, 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 we play in the same band. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for me to uh, remember the days of when. But as soon as, uh, you know, uh, his daughter was born, it was things changed and changed for the better for him. Mm -hmm. So he's a happy guy. And Lane, I've known practically forever, somebody else. And, yeah. you know, the great... The great parents to all yeah. their girls, and yep. the idea that going on is um, going as far as she is in that side of the business. Also, um, she also works in the um, justice corrections, uh, system. which she just graduated in December from John from John, John Abbott, Abbott yeah. College. Fantastic! I mean, and you know, she's going to be moving to New York very soon, within yeah. the next two weeks. But Mohawk TV sat down with her for an interview. I know I did, mm -hmm. and. Um, 
we got some of her reaction on what it was like to be nominated. And one of the things that I just kind of wanted to bring up, because I, I don't recall if she said this in the interview or not, but when they announced her, because I had asked her off camera if she uses uh, Gawa Nahare or Devery. And, you know, mm -hmm. she says that for this film specifically, she does normally use Devery, but she's, mm -hmm. you, you know, starting to use her Mohawk name. Right. And they <laughs> butchered it. They It was like... Um, you know, Gaia, it was, it was butchered. She didn't right. recognize that she had been called until they said Devery Jacobs. Right. So I thought there was a, like just a funny little moment, you know? Well, you know, it, 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 and I'm one, just a little sidebar here. One time I wrote on a chalkboard, I wrote uh, A-W-E-S-O-M-E -E, and I put a little goggles and I put the little, <laughs> uh, the exantigues, whatever like that. And I said to a friend of mine, I said, can you read that? And he goes, uh, is, is, is that Mohawk? I said, well, let me see if you can read it. He goes, Oh, where so me? And then somebody come around the corner and said, "I think that just says awesome." <laughs> oh, where so me? Shut the hell up! <laughs> oh my god! Um, before we head into that interview, though, we are going to take a quick commercial break. So don't go away. We'll be right back here with more on our town. This program has been brought to you by Get and Go, a proud sponsor of Mohawk TV programming. And so here we are, we're going to be getting into our interview with Goa Nahare Devry Jacobs. For those of you who are watching the show and are from Gahnawage, I'm sure that she's a mainstay in our lives here in the community, but for those of you who don't know and who are watching from around the world, <laughs> uh, especially nowadays that we've uh, hit the net, but um, we're going to jump into it because it's a really big interview today. There was a big announcement made this week where she was nominated for a Canadian Screen, Screen Award. Award. So tell us how that came about and what is it like for people who are watching that necessarily don't know what that is? Well, a Canadian Screen Award <clears throat> is, um, it's basically, it used to be called the, the Genies and it's the Genies and the Geminis that are combined and it's essentially the, the Canadian Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. And so when I, how this all came about was uh, I filmed Rhymes for Young Ghouls last year mm -hmm. and I really wasn't expecting anything to, to come out of it. It was an amazing opportunity, and it was the first time I ever played a lead role in a, in a production before. And since then, there's just been all kinds of positive feedback, and so many critics really loved it, and we've been getting really great responses. And, and then just recently, actually Monday, I found out that I, I've been nominated for this, this award. Mm -hmm. And... How this all came about was uh, a few days ago on Facebook, actually, the, the director of the awards, his name is Louis Calabro, he messaged me and he invited me out to this nominee press conference. And I was like, is this hinting <laughs> that, I, that I'm nominated? And they, they can't tell you, right? Because they can't tell anybody until the until press conference. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm not based out of Toronto, but I can make it to there if it's necessary. Like, do you think it would be good for me to go? And he's like, yes, I think it would be good for you to go. So I was like, I swear to God, if I'm not nominated, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> Why are you happy here? So yeah. I ended up going out and it turns out I was nominated and I, I was, my heart was beating a million miles an hour and I was so nervous and excited and it, yeah, like I said, I, I've been nominated and... Was it shocking? Or were you kind of, you know, maybe expecting it at that point? Well, I, because it was kind of hinted towards me, I, I was kind of more inclined to thinking that I was going to be nominated. But when he told me, I was like, oh my God, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's such a, a prestigious nomination. And, and just mm -hmm. to, just to have that, especially for my first film, not necessarily my first film, but my first time being a lead in something. And, mm -hmm. and now it's my first nomination. It's, it's great. And I'm so excited for for March 9th. I'm sure that it's a it's a huge accomplishment so congratulations um, but what is the reaction that you've been getting you know since the nomination and how have things been going since then? My Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email it's all been blowing up and 
I was saying to you before, it was like on my way back from Toronto, I would check my email and within five minutes, I'd have like eight emails. I'm like, oh my God, I don't, don't know how I'm going to get to respond to everything. But it's been great. I've seen so much support from, from the community. Like I just went on the K103 this morning just for a quick, uh, quick shout out. And then I'm going to be on the noon hour talk show tomorrow at noon. I'm doing uh, this interview and then I've also interviewed with the Eastern Door and mm -hmm. with uh, Yuri so mm -hmm. there's been so much support from the community and everybody wants to wants to know about her and are really excited for me and and it just it makes me happy to see how much support I do have from, mm -hmm. from everybody here and also of course you know it is a big accomplishment and, and it's nice to see the you know your fellow fellow community members rally around you and and but this is not your it, you know, your, um, not to say that it's not your biggest accomplishment, let's just get into um, the film that you have been nominated for. Uh, the director is Jeff Barnaby, um, who I've known and worked with before, and um, great film. Could you tell us a little bit about what it is and what's it about and, and how did you get involved in that film? Um, well, that's a few questions in, in one, but. I guess, um, firstly, I'll give you the synopsis of the film is that um, it takes place in 1976 on this fictional Mi'kmaq reserve and there's my character, 15-year-old Ayla, and she's had a really hard life and she's kind of been reluctantly forced into her family's drug trade and she's tired of this sadistic Indian agent ruling her reserve with an, with an iron fist and just basically treating everybody horribly. And so she gets together with her friends and she formulates a plan to to steal the money back that was stolen from her family. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, she also plots to get revenge. And so she breaks into the residential school, she steals back the money and she, she kicks ass. <laughs> All in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. And so it's it's got these different elements, kind of like um, a tar Tarantino-esque kind of mm -hmm. notion where you go back into history and you you rewrite it and essentially the people who've been oppressed or discriminated against come on top and like the reason why I use Tarantino as an example is because if you look at Inglorious Bastards you see Hitler gets killed or mm -hmm. by, by a Jew and in Django Unchained then you see the the slave coming on top and, mm -hmm. and rebelling against his his colonizer so just all of these different things it, it it's really interesting and it's a it's a really powerful film and a powerful message that we we wanted to shock people with mm -hmm. we wanted them to be like oh my god because so many Canadians and North Americans don't even have any idea what happened in their own country's history and right. with um like they don't even know what residential schools are so mm -hmm. it's not that that also goes without saying it's not a sob story either it's uh it's just basically a story of survival mm -hmm. anyways um <laughs> at the beginning of the you know when you when you were able to get involved in that did you ever think that it was going to get this big no i mean i started out and i knew it was an amazing accomplishment there there aren't many actors that get to be a lead in a production or get to play a character as strong as as ayla as the character that i got to play mm -hmm. and for it to be a First Nations woman too, who is who's so strong. It's, uh, it was really, it was a difficult role to play, but mm -hmm. it, it was the best learning acting learning experience I've ever had in my life. And just how you you asked me before how I got involved with it was yeah. um, Renee Haynes, who's like the casting director for for Native films, like she cast Twilight and, and stuff like that. But um, she put out a, a nation or international search across the states and, and Canada for uh, an open casting call for people to send in their, their tapes, auditioning for it. And I just did it on a whim. I heard of it through my agent and through Facebook. And so I was like, okay, I might as well try it out. I wasn't thinking anything of it. Mm -hmm. And um, turns out that I was put on the short list and it was kind of funny because they did an international search for this character or for this actor, and I ended up being in the same community that they were filming in in the first place. I know, that's crazy. Did you know Jeff beforehand? No, no I didn't okay. know him, and I didn't even realize that he was living in the community before, and his <laughs> mom lives here, so it's yeah. just small world, and we yeah. seem to cross paths, like not even cross each other's paths until 
yeah. until we did find each other, but it, it was great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah, you're right, it's a small world, and, and um, you know, I think that definitely the, the film, I heard, is going to be viewed in theaters now at this point, because yeah. it started out on um, the festival the you know, circuit, circuit yeah. and now it's making its way into theaters. It's on January 31st that we're going to have a, a theatrical release, and that's going to be across Canada. I'm not exactly sure which theater or what times yet in Montreal, right? but it's going to be released here for sure. Cineplex picked it up. That's amazing. So how does that make you feel? It's crazy because, you know, that's been my, my dream forever. That's always what I wanted. And then when I was in high school, I actually, there was a lull for a few years because of the, the writer strike and everything, and I wasn't booking any jobs. And I was just like, all right, you know, it's, it's not a reliable career choice. So I ended up going to school for something else. Mm -hmm. I went to John Abbott College for Youth and Adult Correctional Intervention, which mm -hmm. I just graduated from. But, I heard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but just because, you know, it didn't, it didn't seem like I could make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. It was always my dream, but I was just like, ah, you know, you're just dreaming. It's, it's not realistic. But then, lo and behold, it, it ended up working out for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm... Um, I couldn't be more thankful and really I, I really owe everything that's happening to me now with the nominations and the film winning awards and even signing with my managers who are, who are in the States, they're called Circle of Confusion. None of that would have happened if it weren't for Jeff Barnaby who was rooting for me to, to get this character. I mean, I think that, you know, when you look at all you've done, you started in acting from a young age mm -hmm. and um, how many years has it been, would you say? Um, I, my first production ever was The Wizard of Oz at the Turtle Island Theatre Company, mm -hmm. and I played the little ballerina munchkin. <laughs> um, but that's, I, I've had an interest in performing even before that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's been about 10 years since I signed with my agent in Montreal, so it's been about 10 years for my film career. And I finally have something. <laughs> Well, I mean, you're right when, when they say sometimes that industry could be unreliable. It's mm -hmm. hard. It's a hard industry to break into, you know. And I was thinking, I was like, well, I think that, you know, everyone has their own um, niche in a market. Mm -hmm. But I think even being Native American and finding a niche in this big market would be, you know, in itself, I would imagine, would be, you know, uh, something that was very challenging. Hmm. Yes, no? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, for me, I haven't... It, it, it can be challenging, but at the same time, this was one of the first times that I even played my own ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Before I played, like, Italian, Afghan, I've played Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Like, everything under the sun, like, every obscure ethnicity. Yeah. So, I, I still can play these other roles, but this one was especially important to me because it included my own history and I drew inspiration mm -hmm. from my life and my family's life and things like that so it, it can be difficult and there is an extreme lack of native characters throughout mm -hmm. the industry but I think that's that's starting to change because if you look at the at the Canadian Screen Awards right now all the nominees like there's um, Michelle Thrush from Blackstone, Sherry Maracle from Blackstone um, who else is there? There's uh, Jennifer Podemski from mm -hmm. Empire of Dirt and for the, um, geez, what do you call it, Inspire Awards. And then there's also a tribe called Red. And I, mm -hmm. I, know, I know I'm missing a few people, but it seems like we're really making waves now and that we're really starting to, to be heard and, and take over. So well, I think we grew up, you know, in my era, not yours, but with, you know, the, the green guy. I think I can't remember his name. He was green, though. He was a green. I can't remember his name. You know, Gumby? Maybe, no, 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 no. <laughs> Tom Green, not Tom Green, but he was like one of the bigger actors. Him and Adam Beach, they were like in everything. Oh, okay. They were in like every movie. They were like the token native, you know, guys that would play. And now you're seeing a lot more um, actors and actresses evolving and up and coming. So, um, you know, I think that's a that's a really you know, think something to be really proud of. Um, what do you think or how do you feel things will go from here? 
well, it would be my hopes that I can like book a million jobs and you know just be a full time actor, move to Hollywood and whatnot. <laughs> no, but realistically speaking, I'm actually moving to New York next week or in about two weeks,、mm -hmm. um, just so I could be closer to my managers. For the past year, I just wanted to make sure that I finished school, I finished、uh, the commitment that I started, and、um, now that I'm going to be moving to New York, I actually get to.、Uh, Get to go on the auditions and meet the people that I've been sending all of these self tapes to.、Mm -hmm. um, they've been having me do like almost it could be as many as like three self tapes a week or as little as once every two weeks or something. But and what is that? You just tape yourself in front of the camera. Yeah,、or? you you record、uh, you record your audition. You have a reader. I know my mom and my sister have been helping me out tremendously with that,、uh, but. Yeah, you self tape, so it's that's what I, how I ended up getting the role for Rhymes for Young Ghouls, but it ends up it, it's kind of harder to book a self tape because you can't actually see them in person and、mm -hmm. and you don't get to get any feedback from the the people or any a, a second chance really, but I've been doing that and、uh, but I, it'll be good to to actually meet people.、Um, When I go to New York and just get my foot in the door over there,、mm -hmm. and with my nomination, it'll only really help me. Right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a it's something that's、um, a big deal, and also showcases what you can do and,、mm -hmm. and things like that.、Um, I understand too that you auditioned for a pretty big、um, movie this past summer. Do you feel comfortable talking a bit about that? Sure.、Um, Well, I I obviously can't release details about the <laughs> like, about the、no. production. I I signed a non-disclosure agreement, but this past、mm. summer I auditioned for Star Wars.、Mm -hmm. uh, that was this summer when I was、uh, in LA auditioning, and I was told at first that、um, that you didn't get the part, and you know you didn't quite fit the character that we were looking for. And I was like, okay, fair enough. But then. Maybe about a month and a half, two months later, they were like, "Actually, we relooked at the character and and we learned new things about about the character that we that we didn't know before, and we'd like to to audition again." So, I did a, a self tape here in Montreal, and I sent it off, and J J Abrams really liked my tape, and so I flew down to L A again, and I got to meet with him. I met with him for. Almost an hour, and I auditioned with him one on one. So that was <laughs> that's amazing, crazy, exciting, and、yeah. I couldn't even believe it. I was just I I tried not to geek out on him and be too starstruck, <laughs> but I I didn't end up getting the role unfortunately. But just it was exciting to see that I could audition for these big productions and、mm -hmm. and be on par with these other actors. It was just like it was craziness,、mm -hmm. really. I mean that in itself too. Again, it's something pretty amazing, and you know.、Um, I think when you get to a certain level in your career, does it ever like hit you where you're like, "Wow, I can actually do this"? You know what I mean? Like I'm actually at a certain caliber where people are taking me seriously. And yeah, for sure. I mean, I think when it really hit me was usually I don't like posting things on Facebook. Like I'm I'm kind of private in in what I share, and and I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but. When 2013 ended, I was just like, "Okay, you know what? I don't even care. I'm just gonna like." Figure out everything I accomplished this year and and see how 2014 will be like. Say it'll be even better.、Mm -hmm. So I, I listed everything that I that I got to do this year, and I was just like, wow, you know, I've really did a lot, and and it was something that made me really proud of myself. And、mm -hmm. and I, that's the thing is like, in the community, sometimes people think you're bragging if you do something good,、mm -hmm. but at that point, I was just like. You know, I I rarely talk about it with people, and and I wanted to share it, and、mm -hmm. and I felt really, I felt good, and I don't know, it was it was something I shared, and I think that was one of the moments that I realized I was like, I really I can do this, and and it makes me feel a little bit better about moving to New York, so I won't be,、uh, I'm not like chasing <laughs> these unrealistic dreams that there's like some possibility or potential that I could make a career out of it.、Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm sure that you know we're just starting to see the beginning of you, and and hopefully, you know, this this will be、uh, something that we'll see a lot more coming from you in the future. And I hope so.、Um, do you feel that it's something that you're gonna go and pursue and put all your heart and and energy into? Well, that's why I wanted to wait until I graduated to move.、Away. Like I said, I just wanted to finish my commitment so I could focus all of my energy on it. 
I've never been able to focus solely on acting before. I was always in school, I was always working, mm -hmm. doing other things, but now I really get to focus on this and and I'm really excited to do that. Um, I, I can't wait to see what I can do with it and also just I have so much more to learn and I just want to push myself and see how far I, I can go with this and and just I figure moving to a new city and and being able to be closer to my managers and new experiences can mm -hmm. really help me draw and in, draw inspiration from when I'm acting. Of course, and moving to a new city in one of the largest cities in, <laughs> in the world. Um, is that daunting for you or are you going with family? Like, give us some well, details. <laughs> I, uh, it was, for me, it was either between New York and LA because those are the two meccas of the film industry. LA is mm -hmm. much bigger, but I didn't feel quite ready for the West Coast yet just mm -hmm. because I don't have as many connections out there. But I have family who are iron workers in, in New York and my managers are out there. And, and I just, ha I feel like I have more connections out there. Plus it's a lot closer to home. Mm -hmm. And so, I feel like that would be kind of a stepping stone. I, I do, I, I mean, I would like to, to go to LA in my future, but just mm -hmm. not quite yet. I'd like to, I'd like to stay on the West Coast and I've been given advice before that uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna move to LA, do it when you have a job booked already. So you have, so you're going there with a purpose mm -hmm. and, and not staying out there purposely for a long time and then just becoming a waitress or something. Yeah, I mean, that's great advice. So you're young, you're, uh, you know, going to be 21 years old, as we discussed uh, earlier off camera this year, 21. And already, have, uh, you know, I've accomplished uh, a lot. What would you say to um, other women your age or even younger uh, people that are looking to get into this kind of work? Um, what kind of advice would you give? That you have to be persistent and you can't get discouraged when you go for a while without booking anything like even though for me right now I'm, I'm getting a lot of success it's not necessarily financial success because right now I'm just trying to get my name out there as much as possible so it's been a lot of film festivals it's been a lot of awards but I haven't done I haven't filmed any production since Mohawk Girls which was last spring mm -hmm. so you have to have a lot of patience and you have to um, at the beginning be willing to to put in that extra work and like I was saying before it it was a few years before like there was a, a lull of a few years so you you can't get discouraged and you really have to keep at it and and you really have to love it to to be able to dedicate yourself to that mm -hmm. and for me I I feel more comfortable knowing that I have a backup plan too that I can rely on my schooling and I can go work at a shelter or work for social services or, or different things like that, mm -hmm. be a counselor. So I, I can rely on that also mm -hmm. in case that there's something eventually that can prevent me from, from being an actor or something like that. But I don't know. Right now I'm kind of diving in head first and, and I'm really excited to, to see what happens. Well, that's great. And it sounds like a good plan. <laughs> so, well, congratulations once again. Is there anything else you feel is important to add? Um, I don't know. I, I think we're okay. I think we're good. So uh, the show is going to be airing March? March, not 6th, 9th. 9th. March 9th. On CBC, I'm sure? Or I'm pretty sure it's CBC, but CBC, I'll probably keep you TV, but yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a live, uh, live event and... It's out of Toronto, so you yeah. have to go and you're going to be waiting uh, it's in gonna the be audience. A whole, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a whole week leading up to it. Like there's a fan Great. zone, there's a nominees a reception, and then it's all leading up to the actual Canadian Screen Awards. I know, that's so exciting. You it is so exciting. so excited. I'm ridiculously pumped for this. I'm excited <laughs> for you. <laughs> Can you get us backstage? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, congratulations once again, and we look forward to, to seeing all of your work in the future. Thank you so much. This program has been brought to you by Get and Go, a proud sponsor of Mohawk TV programming. Well, welcome back to the program. Our town. Certainly is our town. I love the fact that we can get to 
all the people in our community and we get an opportunity to speak to somebody like Owen Hunter Jacobs in our town. It's, it's just amazing. I know. Me. It's great. And it was such a great story. And we wish her, you know, all the best of luck in all her future endeavors. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to seeing a lot more of her in the future. That's right. But speaking of out of town, yeah, people are still uh, creating some waves here. This was a great story, though. And you've I've seen this sweater at a powwow. Mm -hmm. So this is not a... This is something that you can wear and see what kind of reaction that you can get. Too. Wear that around here and see what kind of reaction you're going to get. That's it. Um, one of the things that are making headlines this week was a story that came out of, uh, well, that I seen on CBC News mm -hmm. was a Native girl uh, went to school with a sweater on and the front says, got land. Mm -hmm. And when you turn around, it says, think an Indian. <laughs> So, but I thought it was, it was fantastic. I mean, I've seen the, sh the sweater too, I think, at the powwow in, in different places maybe. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, so she went to school, the story is, and that the school administration said that the sweater was offending some of the student population. So mm -hmm. she was approached by administration to turn the sweater inside out. Mm -hmm. to wear it inside out first and uh, apparently there was other students who did take their sweaters off but this one girl in particular said no i'm not gonna do it mm -hmm. and um went to school with it on again <laughs> and then went to school with it on for a third time she right. had the support of her parents and things like that and stood by the fact that you know she was not going to be told what she could wear that's right that there's a certain amount of justice mm -hmm. in the sweater that's right the uh, the reserve, the Star Blanket Reserve, which I got a kick out of as one of the <laughs> characters that they have over uh, at, at the radio station. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the support there has been mm -hmm. immense, mm -hmm. which is something to see. I mean, in, in when you're talking about personalized clothing, when you're talking about messages, I mean, the message itself could be, if you're playing devil's advocate, be a derogatory to some people, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. let's be honest, it's not a shirt that's lying. I mean, there's no hate crime that's being presented here. Mind you, I <laughs> it's don't know. It's just a different perspective on something. And I mean, you know, if you look at history over the years, you know, there's a lot of native land that has been confiscated. So this is the whole point of the shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of clothing that teenagers are wearing that are far more untruth or inappropriate. So I think this was the whole point of like really just standing by what yeah, she I, I personally know the I'm shirt not, that she wore. I personally am not, you know, there's no I don't think anybody in Gunawan no, would be offended if that all. shirt was you know worn around here. <laughs> Maybe at a collar perhaps, but other than that though, <laughs> it's a good sweater. It's a good sweater. So yeah. Um, the show is definitely short and sweet today. We're going to be back next week with um, an interview with Grand Chief Mike DeLille here on Our Town. That'll be airing uh, next Thursday. So stay tuned for that. Uh, other than that. That's about it. That's about it. Uh, welcome to 2014. And, and it's going to be a bright season here on Our Town. Yeah, we've got a lot of good ideas developing here uh, on the show. And hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of Lance and I in the coming months as we head into spring and summer. And, um, you know, a lot of people liked the, uh, you know, buying, buying carols for a dollar. We had a great time doing <laughs> so, that, absolutely. So you may see a lot more antics like that in the coming uh, shows. So thanks for staying with us, and we'll see you again real soon. Thanks very much. On a giveaway. On a... Kehaga Tati Adras, the Kayerniga Yadu, the Wadder Ordu. This program has been brought to you by Get and Go, a proud sponsor of Mohawk TV programming.